Who of you has programmed for who, who of you has programmed Python for less than twelve months? Hands up. Okay. Less than three years? Okay. And more than three years? Okay, cool. It's it's super cool. Awesome mix of uh, different knowledge levels. So I hope this presentation will help the beginners, and I hope the the experts can share some information so we can add them to the presentation. I would like to talk today about how we can learn Python quicker. But before that, I would like to apologize because that presentation is in English. I'm really sorry. My Spanish is non-existing. Um, I just moved to Chile two months ago, and uh, I can order a beer, but it's not good for a talk at a PyCon. I'm really sorry. But I'm also very thankful for giving this talk today. I'm really, um, I'm very happy about the, the chance to give the talk, and I hope we can use that um, talk here to gather the information for beginners. So you might ask, who's that guy at the stage? So I would want to answer this uh, question very quickly. My name is Hannes. I'm a Python developer at Renewable.com. Renewable is a web project where we, um, we run a search engine for renewable energies. Basically, you can find your your options and how to save energy and money on the website. Um, there are a bunch of more information, don't worry about them, but the key is here, like a couple of years ago, I had no idea about Python. I programmed a little bit of Java because I had to learn this in univers university and I never got around the fact that I had to write four lines of code to get a print statement as we just saw in the earlier presentation. That didn't make any sense. Um, I'm very happy to discover Python, but um, that was a long, long way to get there. So now you might ask, so what, what does he want? Yeah. So I would like to speed up the learning process for beginners. We realized our project, and it took us a couple of years to get to the point. And I will show you a learning curve and what had an impact on what, what helped us and what didn't. But I would like to shortcut that for future beginners. It would be wonderful to tell them, you know what, focus on these sources, these resources, because they'll help you uh, to get to know Python quicker. But I also would like to compile the best learning practices. It's not just a talk to you guys. It's about what, what we all can put together to help future beginners. So you might ask now, why should I worry about this topic at all? You might know Python for more than three years, you're an expert, you, you run your own packages, et cetera, et cetera. So why should you care about beginners? We need beginners in the Python community so that the, the language stays active. We need new ideas for packages, for bug fixes, for disruptive ideas, et cetera, et cetera. And this comes from beginners. But also, um, Jacob gave a talk last week in Santiago, and he was talking about user conversions. If we have more beginners in the, in the Python community, we have more people using Python and Django, we have more people contributing bug fixes, and then we have more people working as core developers for packages like, or for web, uh, frameworks like Django. And that also means that the language stays active. Yeah, you have more people who can review, you have more people who can uh, do commit accesses, you, you basically can develop quicker. So what I would like to do is I would compile your ideas as well in this presentation. If you know a package or if you know a website or a book which helped you to learn Python, which helped you to get to the point where you are right now, share it with us and we add it to the presentation. So and hopefully after the conference we can share that with all the other people who want to get further into Django or Python. All right. So I want to tell you a little story how Avar and I learned Django or Python. And we started from nothing, and I want to show you where we ended up and um, how we got there. So let's, let's start. So in 2010, Python was a snake for us. Yeah? Um, we looked into Django, and Django was, oh God, a, a musician. Nowadays it's a movie, but yeah. Um, and Celery, um, coincidentally, Python projects have an affinity with vegetables, um, was a vegetable. So one night, we, we were dreaming about this idea of making it easier for people to find options to save energy and to save money. And so we were envisioning a website, and we were thinking about PHP and MySQL and this typical stuff which you use back in the days. And then one night, Avaro told me, hey, I've heard about this thing called, called Django. So we looked it up, and at first I was very skeptical. I did some stuff in PHP, and I said, OK, I, I give it a week. And if it convinced me, then we stick with that. It took like 15 minutes. We looked at the documentation, we looked at the tutorial, we're like, boom, hey, 
there's no redundancy in there. It's like you don't have to open and close connections to a database anymore like you have to do in PHP. That's pretty awesome. So we had a goal. We wanted to learn Python and Django to realize our idea. So we had to learn a bunch of tools. So nowadays, it's a geolocation site that's running on GeoDjango. So we had to look into PostGIS, we had to look into Postgres, we had to get around Python, first of all, Django, GeoDjango. Then we use, obviously, South, Fabric, et cetera, et cetera. So it was like, a, it was, it's not just learning Python, it's just like the whole ecosystem. So we had this vision, we wanted, where do we want to get? And we had this vision of having this website, a very simple website where just people enter their address and they get then suggestions. And we wanted to, we, we wanted to calculate as many houses as we can and tell the people, look, if you install this in this technology, let's say light bulbs, you can save $50 a month or $50, $20 a month or whatever it's possible. So we wanted to help people to save energy money. So we had this vision, but it was a pretty long way to get there. So we had, to, we had to start with very small steps. Obviously, we went back. The first step was we go to the Django documentation. We went through the tutorial. Like everyone else, everyone beginner, every beginner does that. And then, hoo hoo, we have our first Django app. Yeah. You save something um, in, the, in, in the database, you retrieve it, and, but then you're, you're wondering, wait a second, I just did the tutorial. How can I realize my own project? So there's still there's a gap between the two. So the next source, oh, that was like the beginning of the learning curve. Yeah. Um, we learned the Django documentation is amazing, but it's just a very small step to get to the point to get to the point where we are right now. So the next offline tool I would say we looked at were books, but that can be super overwhelming. Yeah. Just take a bookshelf in a in a book, big bookstore, and you find up all these options like Python for dummies, Python for kids, Python for um, moms or whatever you want to find. It's like, it's like, well, what should you choose? Yeah. We ended up using uh, four books. It was Django Practices, Pro Django. Um, that was right at the beginning. I think we, we dropped them at, the, at some point. Um, last May, we picked up two scoops for Django, which is a cool um, collection of best practices. And then when we looked into GeoDjango, we um, picked up the book Python Geospatial Development. So through these books, um, we got a little bit further. We learned a little bit more, and all of a sudden they were talking about, hey, you need to install Postgres if you want to use PostGIS, and if you want to, if, if you want to use GeoDjango. So it was like, hey, we learned a little bit more. The next thing, obviously, there are some websites. And there's no completeness here. Um, I just want to point out uh, a few websites we used, or we, I looked at. Um, obviously, there's Planet Python and Planet Django. Who of you has used Planet Python and Planet Django? Hands up. Oh, wow. OK. Um, it's OK. Um, OK, um, I'm, I'm a bit surprised because that's, it, it's not a website. They're just aggregating blog posts from the community. Um, and Planet Python is pretty cool. If people work on new projects and there's a new announcements, you don't have to read like hundreds of blogs. You just read this one blog and they aggregate it. So it's pretty cool. It's like, I, I would highly recommend that. Um, I further looked at um, James Bannett's website. James Bannett is the, the release manager for Django, and he runs a nice blog. Um, sometimes with, when they come up with new technologies, let's say they, when they did the switch from Django 1.4 to 1.5, uh, talking about the user model, um, James Bannett had a wonderful blog article, and he explained the changes. And then there was a website called Go Django. Um, they used to run a little six-minute videos on explaining how you, um, for example, use social, social auth or how you use class-based views. Uh, unfortunately, this website now went commercial, and uh, most of the videos you have to pay for. But um, the, the old videos are still free. But the cool thing was, through these websites, we learned GeoDjango, we learned uh, about uh, South, we learned about Fabrics. So all of a sudden, this ecosystem got bigger and bigger and bigger. Then there's a website called Stack Overflow. Who of you has used Stack Overflow? Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. The cool thing with Stack Overflow, you have over 200,000 questions so far tagged with a, with a tagline of Python. So there's a good knowledge base around. There's a good, um, you can ask questions. They get usually answered pretty quickly. Um, and for the beginners, I would say don't be shy. Um, maybe read the docs before. 
but I can tell you when I would look back at my first questions, they're super ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and they got answered. They got answered in a really nice way, and the people were helping, and after I saw the answer, I was like, okay, move, that was actually not too bad. Um, the cool thing is through, through just browsing through um, the questions and the answers of Stack Overflow, we found amazing packages. So we found Django cities, for example. Um, in our application, we need to tag um, a geographic coordinate, and we want to find out um, which country, which state, which city is that from, and we want to do this offline. We, want, we didn't want to do um, ping like Google Maps all the time to, to figure out what's the, what's the location. So there's an amazing package behind it, ready-made. Uh, we also wanted to learn from other projects. Back in the days when we started, we, we looked at Pinex. Have anybody used Pinex before? Okay, a few people. Okay, we had a really rough start with that project. Uh, it was like, it was breaking with them tons of dependencies and it was like super big and for a beginner it's like you drink from a fire hose. But the good thing was you see how a professional Django project is run. James Tauber is one of the, the core committers for Django and he, like the, the folder structure is like as it is, as it is supposed to be, um, as you would wish it. So when we started, we put everything like in one folder. We didn't know where to, where to break up apps and it was, everything was a little bit unclear. But it was wonderful to just look at professional projects and to just learn from them. So one thing we learned from them was the folder structure. Um, but we got to a point when you, when you take a look at the, the learning curve, it's sort of saturated. Yeah? You got to a point, there was no feedback. There was no active feedback we got. So we were, list, we were reading through other websites, we were applying all different codes and um, we plugged in all this stuff, but there was never really, we never really found out is this actually best practice. And one thing where we, where we then tried, we went to meetups. Obviously, this is very restricted to, to communities where there's an active Python community or cities with an active a Python community. Um, but it seems like you have this here in Uruguay. I mean, that's a pretty cool PyCon with um, 300 res registrations. So that's is a really good sign for an active community. So at that time when we worked on this project, I got a chance to work in Australia, and they have a in Melbourne, at least, they have a wonderful Python community. It's like every month there's a meeting and roughly 50 people attend. Broad spectrum from beginners to super experts who run their own Python develop shops and, and development shops and et cetera like this. But the cool thing was you could ask any questions and you could rock up with a little bit of code and can say, hey, can you have a look at this? I'm really unsure if that's really best practice or if that's efficient or not. The cool, every week or every month somebody would come up with two or three presentations. And one thing I learned was, uh, was the Zen of Python. Who, have, who has heard about the Zen of Python here? Okay, the trouble is what I had, well, what I had when I learned Python, I had heard about the, the Zen of Python, but it didn't make any sense to me. It's like, what does it actually mean? And then all of a sudden, at the meetup, somebody gave a presentation with, with examples of the Zen of Python. And that was amazing. It was just really cool. It, it, all of a sudden, it makes sense. It made sense. Through going to these meetups and, go, for example, here, PyCons here, I got a chance to just meet other developers, and all of a sudden you had a relationship with them. You could email them, you could call them, you could just show up, them, show up, uh, meet up with them. And um, one thing what I did was um, I joined the Django shop. There was a development team um, in Melbourne at the time, and they ran a little shop, and they said the owner of the shop said, "Hey, all the beginners, you guys." Join us, um, you don't have to work for us, but you can just hang around, you can ask the questions to the expert, um, we can show you best practices, etc. That was cool, that was really nice. Um, and all of a sudden, they taught me how to use try and accept. Um, <laughs> it seems to be pretty obvious for an expert, but as a beginner, it's not a concept which um, comes across for very quickly. So that was a big learning curve, um, just talking to people and learning from experts. Right now, we're in Startup Chile, we're testing this product, we're developing this, uh, this product and idea there. And there are a bunch of web startups. And the, the web startups are split between Ruby and Django. And we started a little like Django group where we exchange ideas and packages and um, experiences. And all of a sudden, um, somebody raises the question, it's like, hey, how, what are you using for reg registering users? Or what are you using for comments? Or um, what are you using for different applications, and then we always get together from time to time, or we just, we just meet each other, and we talk about it. Um, good thing, good example was we used um, Django Commons. Um, 
and but everyone had a different package, and we talked about what is good and what's bad in this package, and um, it was very helpful. So, as you can see, it's another big step learning curve. But then the biggest one is coming to PyCons. Um, I think we need to convince more people to join to come to PyCons, and it's really amazing that the registration at this conference is free. That's wonderful. Just big thanks to the organizers. That's uh, amazing. So here, I think we had the chance to chat already to a lot of people, and we got a lot of ideas of how, what, what we would implement next and um, what we want to do in the future. So it was wonderful. But there was just one story. Yeah, we got from zero Python to um, a, a little bit of Python. We don't, we're not even intermediate yet, so we're just somewhere in the beginner stage. But I got the chance to ask um, five experts, I would say, in Python. And I wanted to know how they got to know Python and what's their recommendation. And there were five of them. They're really um, enthusiastic in, in helping out. Um, Selena is one of the core developers for Postgres, but she also works uh, with Python at, at Mozilla. Um, Michelle runs like the PDX uh, Python. It's a, a Python group in Portland. Uh, there's a very good community around there. Eric is the core or the, the key person behind Read the Docs. Who has used Read the Docs before? Cool. Yeah. The guy who just started the project. Um, Javier is one of the organizers of the Python group in Melbourne. And Jacob, I think um, he doesn't need any introduction. So um, I asked them four questions. So how did you get started with Python? I think that's always interesting to know um, how they stumbled up on. Um, what resources are, are they using? Um, because they, they come from a broad spectrum. And what's their recommendation? And then there was also a side question, how can beginners contribute to the, to the um, community? So Sil I had a chat with Selena, and she was really interested in, in beginners. She runs um, a Python group called PyLadies in Portland which is um, dedicated for, to teach Python to women, but it's not exclusively for women. Um, and what they do is it's a one-to-one -one mentor relationship. So if you sign up, they, they peer up with a, with a mentor, and you can learn Python. And what she said was really interesting. She was really emphasizing you should have this one-to-one -one mentor relationship. That's really important. It's not just books. Books don't tell you. They tell you maybe something, but they don't give you the feedback. Uh, Michelle was emphasizing um, that she's using like emails, phones, and things like that. And both of them, that was what I found was really interesting. They didn't mention any websites. Yeah, they didn't mention Stack Overflow or IRC or online, or online other online tools. And um, I was wondering why it's not happening. And they said, yeah, we go into PyCons and we got to know people, and then we stay in touch with them via email, or phone, etc. So that's how they got, how they stay updated with the community. Michelle made a very good point. Um, she was saying that if you want to learn a programming language, it doesn't matter whether you learn Ruby or Python or Java or JavaScript, as long as you, pay, you learn the same one as your friend. If you have someone you can learn together, that makes a big, makes a big impact on you, and you can learn faster. Eric, he had a, <laughs> he had a long history in how he got into Python. Um, he wanted to cheat his video games. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but he learned programming also through a mentor. And then he stumbled up on Python. He got to know more and more of Python. And then he worked for the, for the newspaper in Lawrence and got involved with the Django web development. But he was saying that if you have a mentor, and he also recommends having a mentor, and he was recommending there's a website, pythonmentors.com. Um, he was recommending respect the mentor's time. Come up with a, with a solution and discuss the solution is just, just the question itself. Um, he was also uh, emphasizing a couple of websites like PyCoders. PyCoders Weekly, this newsletter, um, is a really good resource for um, um, yeah, different, different uh, Python aspects. Um, Django Roundup, anybody has heard about Django Roundup? Okay, I haven't heard about this either before um, until I talked with Eric, but it's a wonderful podcast. If you, have to, if you have a commute um, and you want, just want to listen to a little bit of Django developments and latest trends, I would hi highly recommend that. Um, it's like 30 minutes long, and it gives you a good introduction to packages, to people, to conferences, to what's going on in the Python community or Django community. Javier is, as I mentioned, he's one of the organizers of um, um, the Python group in, Port in Melbourne. 
but he's also teaching Python um, in Australia at one of the universities in Melbourne. Uh, and he was, he, I think he was the most active one with online resources. He, so he said he's using Reddit, he's using Twitter, um, he's following Ray, Raymond, um, he's using Python, um, different Python websites. Um, so he has a good online resources. So I think these, these tips are really good for amazing for people who live not in, in major cities with a major Python community. He was also heavily re recommending the book Python Standard Library by example. Apparently that helped him. There was previously a website and the website helped him to get to know Python. But it, the website was turned into a book now. Um, he was saying if you want to learn a program language or if you want to learn Python, find a project which is challenging to you but small enough that you can finish it. And the similar thing was uh, Jacob was telling us that um, if you have a problem you want to solve it, you want to solve it um, take something which is meaningful to you so you don't give up. When you do the tutorial in Django, um, do a project which is meaningful to you and you can solve it in, in a short amount of time but it's still challenging enough. Um, interestingly, he's using IRC because it seems like the entire Django community is like communicating via email or IRC. But he's also um, going to PyCons quite frequently. And he was mentioning um, the book Two Scoops for Django, which is a good best practice resource. So what, what are the conclusions from talking to all these different people and what were their recommendations? First of all, anyone said have a challenging project to get beyond the tutorial, you need to have an idea of what you want to realize. And I can say that the project we had, by coincidence, helped us to get into Django and to help helped us to get into Python. Learn with a friend. That's what a lot of them, a lot of the pros said. If you have someone who can tag along, that can help you. And again, coincidentally, since I learned with Avaro together, we started it from the same level and we went basically on the same ship. Um, that helped quite a bit to, to get to the point where we are right now. I would have given up at some point um, <laughs> with some problems. Don't be shy. Go to a meetup and ask questions. There's simply no stupid questions. They all have been beginners before. So if you go to a PyCon conference and um, you have questions, just raise your hand. And read the docs. Eric, <laughs> he was saying that maybe he wanted to drive more traffic to his website. Um, but he, um, he said just a lot of questions have been answered already. But if you get to the point that you haven't, uh, that you don't find it, um, an answer, raise the question to a community, mailing list, meetups, et cetera, et cetera. And that's my personal recommendation. Join um, a Python group early as you can. I think we spent like two or th two and a half years learning Python without any active feedback from the community. Cut this short. Yeah, when you're interested in Python and you have a project you want to realize, go to a meetup, go to conferences. Um, that really helps quite a bit. There's just an overview of um, what you can use if you're interested in groups, um, if you're interested in offline stuff, if you want to mingle with people. Um, there's some recommendations, but it's just an overview we just talked about. But before I conclude with the, or before I finish with the presentation, I would like to thank for all the people who have contributed to this presentation, and especially the community of Python and Django. Um, when I sent out emails to, to the people and asked for their comments, it was really nice to see their feedback. So it's not an evil community. Um, it's very inclusive, as Jacob said yesterday. Um, I emailed them as a stranger, and uh, two days later, um, I was meeting, for example, Selena for lunch, and she was just answering my questions to, to a complete stranger. So the community is really engaging and um, inclusive. And then also thanks to the organizers, and thanks to you for your attention. Thank you. Preguntas? If it, any questions? You could also. Hey, thanks hey. for the talk. Um, wanted to ask. Are there any good resources for learning Python in Spanish that you know of? That's a very good question. Um, it's a very difficult question for me to answer because my Spanish is so bad. But um, let me let me find something. 
Um, Maestro del huevo. Okay. Cool. Any anything else in Spanish you guys recommend? Mm -hmm. PR comunidad de Python Argentina. Okay. Can you um, can you do me a favor? Can you just um, send me an email with these recommendations and um, or email or Twitter or some whatever you want to communicate, and then we add this to the presentation. Yeah. And anything else you have in mind? Just. I was uh, wondering, you uh, you mentioned a lot of uh, uh, learning, like reading tutorials, reading books, reading, 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 and reading. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, in my experience, sometimes you go overboard with the reading and waste a lot of time there, yeah. trying to learn stuff without feedback, like you say. Yeah. Uh, do you think it would have been better to start coding? And start? Just coding. With some guidance, like a, a, a yeah. practical tutorial that gets yeah. you from, uh, not to a hello world, but to something more complex. I, I think where the books and the reading was good, it was a source of inspiration. To say, hey, there's already a package out there which does the job, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then you would immediately imp start implementing that based on the website or based on the book. Um, when you're a beginner and you don't know what the possibilities are of Django, for example, it, it's sort of good to read through the documentation to see, oh, there's this, there's a, they already do this um, authentication of users, for example. There's a login process. I don't have to reinvent the template, this template. So I think it's a combination of both. As soon as you read, you have, you have to code at the same time or soon after. It's not just you can't learn a programming language just by reading. Um, we don't learn a language just by memorizing a dictionary. Otherwise, my Spanish would be better. But um, so. No, it, it, there's a combination between the, the both. We need the seats first, which could be the, the, the reading, and then it needs to be implemented. But I, I would say cut this as, as, as short as you can and just go to a meetup. You learn at a meetup, you learn the up to date stuff. The book might be outdated, it might be about Django 1.2. Yeah, mentoring. Is mentoring. Yeah. Mentoring is big. Through the meetup, you can get a mentor. Yes. Thank you. Any question? Okay, thanks. Uh, Thank you. James. <laughs>